and we're back with a higher resolution. Right now, I got a bunch of people over in City Hall across the street here. Uh, they're not really getting in or anything. Everybody's just kind of blocking the doorway. I'm gonna get on the other side of this truck too. I'm really tired of listening to this generator.
We've got about 150 people. And where the hell are you at anyway? Yeah. 
perform. Raise your hands together. Yeah! And you must see this, right? You must see this. They're amazing. Can you tell us what the name of the name is? The average is running on Sunday. How are you? I didn't know you were going to see the star. Brenda, hi. So, we're wondering if the person that is going to be doing the American Sign Language translation is out there. And if you are, please come up to the truck.
out here. How many students do we have?
problems that we're facing today, because if you, when you read the Chronicle, you get you hear the kind of standard narrative. You get the impression that the administration, the faculty, that all of the different constituencies of the school were you know, oblivious to the problems that the school was facing, were oblivious to the fact that in the course of two, three, four years, $53 million had been cut from the budget of the school. Then we were just spending money and spending money and completely oblivious of the problems that we were facing, of the crisis we were facing. But I will tell you that a year ago, in meetings of the college council, and I, I was, this is my first year as a chair, so I sat in those meetings and I listened very carefully. I didn't have much to say because I didn't know anything, so I had to listen very carefully. And I listened as our chancellor, our previous chancellor, Don Griffin, spoke about the, the, the crisis that we were facing, the pressures that were being placed on the school from Sacramento for us to cut programs, for us to downsize. And he spoke of the need for us to resist this because when the crisis was over, the school had to be left intact that the crisis was not going to last forever, and if we cut classes, if we cut, if we eliminated programs, if we cut faculty and staff, that the school that this city has come to love, the school that has been so important for San Francisco and the entire Bay Area, will no longer exist. So we made a conscious decision to use what reserves are for. Right? I mean, what do you have reserves for? If not to use them in a crisis, but apparently Sacramento has a different idea. Apparently the ACCJC has a different idea of what you do in a crisis. What you do in a crisis and their philosophy is to destroy a school, to cut it, cut, cut, cut it by, to, to down to half its size, to eliminate programs, 
to destroy an institution that is so essential it's about for people. working class people, for students of color, for the, for the entire city. So please understand that when faced with this crisis, we made a conscious decision to preserve the school without cutting programs, without cutting faculty, and this was the right thing to do. This was the moral thing to do. This was the thing that recognized the principle of social justice. And I must also say that when the first first interim vice chancellor, the first interim chancellor came back in the in the in the summer and in the fall semester, in a meeting with her, when we were discussing all kinds of things, I mean, I wasn't even clear what the meeting was about when she called it. I tried at one point to maybe reach out and see if there was a, that beneath that kind of business-like experience, there was an element of humanity there. And I, tr and I tried to get her to understand how long it was for, the, for, 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 for teachers, for, for staff, for students to be just so demoralized by what was going on at the school. And she leaned over and she looked at me. And she said, I get this. I, I understand about our liberal San Francisco values. Now, I, I, I admit, I mean, I live in Oakland, but she lives in Montana. And she was talking about our liberal San Francisco values, but she said, we can't afford it anymore. I understand about social justice, but we can't afford it anymore. When you cannot afford social justice, um, when you get rid of social justice, there is not a vacuum. Something else fills it. And that's injustice. So, I think my time is up. So, um, all I can say is, you know, I'm, I'm kind of a pessimist. I didn't expect anything like this. Um, and, um, you know, it, 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 it raises my spirit. Um, I want, okay, um, I'd like to read something. Um, because we have to come back here again. Okay, we're going to have to come back here. This is the beginning of a long fight. Um, you know what? Trying to get some inspiration and trying to get up in the morning every day when I have to face, you know, this struggle. I, um, I found some words by Frederick Douglass, the abolitionist, the great abolitionist, who, by the way, was a thief. You know Frederick Douglass was a thief. You know, once upon a time he was giving a speech to, you know, to a, people who had come to, uh, who were opposed to slavery. And he introduced himself as being a thief. He said, I stole these arms, I stole these legs, I stole this body from my master. And he was right. To run away as a slave was a crime. But he did it anyway. This is Frederick Douglass's essay on his, his, his uh, ideas and the philosophy of, of reform. Let me give you a word of the philosophy of reforms. The whole history of the progress of human liberty shows that all concessions yet made to our august claim have been born of earnest struggle. This conflict has been exciting, agitating, all absorbing, and for the time being, putting all other tumults to silence. It must do this or it does nothing. If there is no struggle, there is no progress. Those who profess to favor freedom, yet depreciate agitation, are men who want crops without plowing up the ground. They want rain without the thunder and lightning. They want the ocean without the awful roar of its many waters. This may be a, a this may be, <coughs> excuse me, this struggle may be a moral one, or it may be a physical one, or it may be both moral and physical, but it must be a struggle. Power concedes nothing without a demand. It never did, and it never will. Find out just what people will submit to, and you'll find out the exact amount of injustice and wrong which will be imposed upon them. And these will continue till they are resisted with either words or blows or with both. The limits of tyrants are prescribed by the adorance of those whom they oppress. 
when I come back in people, and great when we come back, each one of us bring 10 more with us that gave you a struggle. Thank you. All right, thank you, Tony. Okay, our next speaker is Lalo Gonzalez, a City College student. But let me just ask, if you are uh, on the speaker's list, please make your way up to the stage and we'll check you in. Hi, everyone. That was, that was a tough act to follow. Um, but uh, they did it on purpose because Tim Paulson's about to tear it up right after me as well. So, uh, All right, so I'll get right to it. For years, higher education has suffered tremendously at the hands of morally bankrupt politicians who have brazenly pushed for draconian policies that have decimated public education systems all over the world. Snap your fingers if you agree, though, all right? Yeah, my, all right. When billions are spent on prisons, wars, and bank bailouts, it is not difficult to realize that the crisis is not one of budgets or resources, but of priorities. California is no different. The state government has continuously pushed for austerity measures that have dwindled public institutions. In a clear representation of skewed priorities, California ranks number one in prison funding, but number 49 for higher education. Government officials would rather fund the systemic criminalization of people of color than to invest in our future. And now, as the politicians continue to disinvest, corporate America is launching offensive to capitalize on its instability. The Accreditation Commission, along with the Interim Administration, are abusing the accreditation process to downsize CCSF and make drastic cuts to courses and programs that are disproportionately affecting low-income communities of color. Despite her egregious agenda to destroy equity, Interim Chancellor has the audacity to call the students who have taken the initiative to save our college as irresponsible, claiming our efforts are only brought negative attention to City College. No. What's irresponsible is a reckless decision to lay off all part-time counselors leaving students in the dark during the registration process. What's irresponsible is cutting funding for disabled students' programs and services in the name of long-term stability. What's irresponsible is divesting from the EOPS Second Chance Program which provides formerly incarcerated persons the necessary resources to become a successful student. Such lack of compassion has been detrimental to the livelihood of students and faculty and staff that our spirit is not broken. So now we find ourselves at the steps of City Hall not to ask, but to demand that the city elected officials take immediate action to meet our demands. If there is one lesson we can take from American history that is applicable today, is that real social change is achieved through mass movements. Therefore, we must trust and confide in ourselves. We must continue to organize and build an independent movement based on labor unions, community organizations, community members, and all allies of the oppressed. Only then can we truly fight for the interests of all students, faculty, staff, and marginalized communities who have been singled out and targeted by the relentless cuts. Only then can we achieve true democracy. We are here to make a bold declaration that the educational process must cherish equality, justice, compassion, and a global community. To declare that the aim of education is to find solutions for poverty, for injustices, for justice, for violence, and war, to strive towards a free, accessible, and quality education for all. We must build an unprecedented, unprecedented resistance and defense of the gains won in past struggles, and if we do so, we will win. For our cause is just. And we have nothing to lose but our chains. Thank you. Thank you, Lalo. Okay, our next speaker is Tim Paulson, who is the Executive Director of the San Francisco Labor Council. All right, thank you. This is, this is a great crowd that came out today. And you should all give yourself a big hand for getting out to this rally. Because we all love City College. I think every, almost everybody that's in this crowd is either going there, been there, teaches there, or has used this valuable, largest, and wonderful educational institution, the jewel of San Francisco forever. And I want to remind everybody of one thing. The voters of San Francisco voted in the highest percentage ever to support education in Prop 30. Here in San Francisco, yes to education. Here in San Francisco, at the same time, labor community coalitions, students, teachers, got together and passed by over 74% Measure A 
to say, keep the classes open, keep the teachers, no pay cuts to classify, and keep this college moving. The voters have spoken. And now, there's a bill going through in Sacramento that's going to trigger money for institutions like City College, where the enrollment has gone down for a variety of reasons. So there is no excuse whatsoever to get into an austerity type of program that the former rapper was just saying. So the Lincoln Council stands behind this institution, and we are going to continue to make sure that this institution stays the great jewel as it is in San Francisco. Thank you. So maybe you know our speaker. All right. <laughs> our next speaker will be Jenny Lamb, who will read a short statement from CAA. And I have to confess, I'm not sure what CAA is. Sorry. Good afternoon. My name is Jenny Lam. I'm the Director of Community Initiatives for Chinese for Affirmative Action. It's great to see everyone out here this afternoon. I'm here to share what City College means to San Francisco. City College embodies the values of equity and inclusion. City College offers people a real chance, a chance to learn, to improve their lives, better themselves and their families. Whether you're a recent immigrant, a high school student, a student looking towards a four-year degree, or a student learning vocational skills, City College is a home for you. And we know education is the single greatest asset in breaking out of poverty, away from violence, and the many hardships faced by everyday people. Yeah! With over 8,000 students enrolled and the newest Chinatown North Beach campus, and a thousand students on the waiting list for ESL classes is clear evidence the importance of the campus and to the college for immigrants and working people of San Francisco. All courses from general education, science, math, history, English, to non-credit courses, ESL and job training, they must be recognized for the impact they're making in students' lives. Students must be at the center for all decisions. Students need to be the winners of this. And we recognize the faculty who have built and carried the tradition of providing quality education at City College. Yeah! We cannot let our City College fail. We're counting on City College to educate the current and future generations of students. We call on Board of Trustees, administrators, faculty and staff, students and community to truly come together and move forward together to build an even stronger City College. Change is already in motion and we must support more transparency, accountability, and greater community input. And San Francisco generously invests in building its public infrastructures, our libraries, our parks, arts and culture, and our schools. And so in closing, not only do we stand with City College, we are all City College of San Francisco. Thank you. Okay, we're going to do a chant. What's, what chant do you want to do? Yeah. Everybody, let's make a little bit noise. Does anyone out here love City College? Because they were combining the classes 
taking the tool, the tools away. I can only learn why is it that I am not learning? And you know, then you realize that it wasn't because my brain wasn't working, it wasn't because they were making it more and more difficult with all these cards. So then you realize that I had to do something. And you know, so what, what we have to do, because I don't have to think of myself. I have to think of each and every one of you. Because all of you guys pay taxes just like I paid taxes before I went back to school. Or like I pay taxes right now. So, with the excuse of this accreditation, they are making it more and more difficult to each one of us. And we need to tell them that they need to find different ways. And they need to make it easier, not more difficult to each one of us. They need to make it easier for our teachers. I am tired of seeing the teachers struggling, running from one corner to the other one of the classroom. I am, dry, I am tired of going to the library and seeing that it's closed. Okay? Estoy cansado de mirar que la librería se encuentra cerrada, de mirar los maestros correr de una orilla a la otra. Okay? Así que necesitamos de decirle a la, la ciudad que hagan lo que tienen que hacer. Decimos que un país ha sido. You know, I've been finding my own manners to work to support the position A. So I've even been paying more taxes, they told me. I am paying more taxes because of you. And now they are telling me that there is no money for the classes. Come on, they need to use the money for what we made it for. Okay, so thank you very much. Gracias. When you get your cell phones out, I want you to put, to put follow saying CCSF now, text that, follow saying CCSF now, so follow is one word, and then you have a space, and then saying CCSF now, I'm going to say it again, put in your phone, you're going to text this, so follow space, saying CCSF now, and you're going to text it to 40404. Everybody got it? Follow, play, save, CCSF now to 40404. Zero four, zero four. Awesome. All right. So next we have, uh, oh. next, next we have Alisa Mesa from AFT 2121. Hey everybody, I'm Alisa Mesa and I'm the president of the faculty union at City College of San Francisco. We represent... by the faculty who are standing around you in the City College of San Francisco make even more noise. So, that is the sound of unity, and that is wonderful. I want to thank everybody for being out here today, because we are here to save, not just to save City College, to save our City College. We want a college, we want a college that is a community college, that is a comprehensive college that serves all of our students and all of those in San Francisco and in the Bay Area who want to come and want to get an education and have goals that can be impacted positively by coming to classes at City College of San Francisco. Does that sound like a good idea? It sounds to us like the kind of thing that the voters of San Francisco voted with 73% to support a comprehensive, complete community college for San Franciscans and for students in the Bay Area. Would you agree? Yeah. So, at a moment when we are talking around the country in our ECK 12 districts about closing schools, and here there is the possibility that they will close one of the largest community colleges in the country and San Francisco's primary place for higher education and workforce training 
and ESL and so many other possibilities. A place that represents hope and represents the future for all of, all of our Bay Area students, we know. At that moment, it means a lot to have everyone standing here together to say that we are City College of San Francisco. Are you City College? Yeah. So let's try it a few times. We are City College. We are City College. We are City College. We are City College. Thank you. So, we're going to make sure that City College is here for everyone. We're concerned about the workers at City College. We don't think anyone should be thrown out on the streets right now. We don't think people should be taking cuts. And we don't think that cuts need to happen to classes that students need. We need to ensure that we continue to offer the quality education that we've always been here to offer. And we want to make this a stronger college for all of San Francisco students. Is that something we can do together? I think so too. We're going to be doing that and it's going to take work and it's going to take those folks in City Hall to help us out and it's going to take all of you and it's going to take some significant pressure but we really need to make it happen and I've never felt more like we can make it happen than I do right now looking out at all of you. So, who's school? from the Bayview District. She's been there for since 1948 and she has helped, she helped to get the Southeast Campus built for that community. I'm going to bring to the stage Dr. Espinola Jackson. Hello everybody. My statement mostly has been made by the other speakers. So what I'm going to say is that I am demanding that the Board of Supervisors do what it is supposed to do. The man has stated he did not want to see any of the city colleges closed. We have been here too long, fought too long for education for our youth, especially in the Baby Runners Park area. We have the highest, the highest rate of non-educated in Baby Runners Point. We cannot longer, any longer, see that this continue by the city and county of San Francisco. So we must demand, not ask, because we the taxpayers, we just voted to make sure that the college will be fully funded. So keep pushing, don't stop. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Yeah. 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 Do you have your song sheets? Yeah. Are you ready to sing? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Me, 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 me. You, 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 you. Yeah. I'm so, so, so. Yeah. All right, I think we're ready, but we need a few more people to come up on stage. And we're just climbing up a little ladder. <laughs> it's in the main little ladder, so it takes a little while for people to get up here. <laughs> yeah. All right, is this song your school? Is this school my school? Is this school our school? <laughs> it takes him a while to get up the little ladder. I mean, um, <laughs> there's no more people here, but... <laughs> Are you hopeful? Are we going to fight? <laughs> Don't we deserve to have a school? <laughs> Okay. 
Congratulations. <laughs> We served over 110,000 students. Now we serve less than 85,000 students. We have lost over 25,000 students. And in the face of that, we've had huge fiscal issues. We've lost over $53 million over the last three years, and that's just because of the budget stuff. But what San Francisco did, they stepped up to the plate in 2012 
and they supported Trump A. So we, we pursued ourselves in assistance to support Trump A. We supported it because we wanted greater access to classes, to make up the classes that were cut. We wanted more student services. We really wanted student college to continue to be the college that we all believe in. But unfortunately, and I hate to say this, Less than one third of the money from Trump A will go to classes and our student services. We supported Trump A, and Trump A is here now. But in the face of Trump A, when we come in, we've laid off 18 academic counselors to provide guidance for our students to make healthy educational decisions. We have over 400 students we're on the wait list for EOPS program, which is a program for low-income at-risk students. We have over 180 students who are part of the Second Chance program, a program for ex-offenders who are on the wait list. These students are being denied access. And I say that that is wrong. And I say that's why we're here today, and to say enough is enough. We want our city college back, and we want city college to reflect the values that we all have fought so dearly and sweated so much for. Yeah. Now it's not enough for us to come here and the rally. We can do this all day. We're San Francisco. This is what we do. Yeah. On the 28th of March, we will be having a conversation about our budget. We need to make sure that the Prop A money, the money that we fought for, that we're being taxed for, is used to support City College. That is used to support the demands of CCSA, CCSF. We need to make sure that the fiscal decisions that are being made on our behalf are reflective of us. And I'm so happy that everybody is here stepping up. We need you at the board meeting to come in. And please continue to fight because they continue to tell you that if you do this, we'll shut down CCSF. Well, it's because of this that we have a CCSF that we all are proud of. And that's what we need to continue to fight for. So I tell everybody, do not be afraid of when they tell you that you can't come out here, you can't have your voices heard, that that parking tax money is not for you, that we can't talk back to the Accreditation Commission. Don't let them tell you that your voice can't be heard because obviously we've all not obeyed that rule and we should continue to disobey that rule. We are City College. This is our City College. We all want to save CCSF, but we all are here because we want to save CCSF the right way. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you and continue to fight. We have a three-point plan which would solve our problems. One, ensure that Prop A funds are used for education as the voters intended. Two, fill any, but we are asking City Hall to fill any budget gap uh, by advancing the funds to City College. Three, we want our elected representatives to call on the U.S. Department of Education to stop the ACCJC's unjustified show-off sanction. You may wonder why I'm wearing this ridiculous pink slip. It's because tomorrow I expect that every employee at City College will be getting a pink slip as part of the requirements of the closure report that the school has been forced into doing by the accreditation commission. Exactly. So before you leave today, I want every one of you not only to sign on to the petition that lists these three points, but please take 10 petitions.
petitions, get them filled out, and send them back to the address on them. The petitions are on the table for the Save City College Coalition over there. Okay, and now next speaker is Eric Blanc, who's a City College student, and he's been very, very key to the organizing here. How are you doing? No, that's not a lot of them. Okay, make some noise if you want to see the college. Make some noise. Come on, folks. Okay, so here's the deal. The people in that building and the people in the accreditation commission and the majority of the board of trustees say that we have to impose cuts on city college. Do you agree with that? No! The same CCSS coalition has a three-point plan that Wendy just explained. There's three very clear demands and solutions for this school that do not require cuts. Do you guys support saving city college? Yeah. It is important that we understand that what this school is facing, what the city is facing, what the country is facing, what the state is facing, is a priority crisis, not a budget crisis. Right? California is number one in prison spending, but number 49 in education. Do you guys think that's acceptable? No, it's unacceptable. Anybody, anybody, whether it's the mayor or on the trustees or in the administration who says there's not enough money for education or city college is either ignorant or a liar. City College is one of the best community colleges in the nation, right? City College precisely because it's one of the best community colleges in the nation. The people behind the attacks on City College, whether it's the interim administration or whether it's the accreditation commission, are imposing an agenda of privatization, right? And where do they think people are going to go? They know where they're going to go. Where are they going to go? Yell it out. Yeah, there's two places. There's two places where people are going to go. Either prison, right? They want communities of color in particular to go to prison, and they want other people to go into private and online education, right? You guys think that's okay? No, it's BS. The Accreditation Commission got a grant just two years ago from the Lumina Foundation, which was founded by the student loan industry, to redesign the accreditation process. How do you feel about that? The Accreditation Commission, the ACC issue is a sham. Their attacks on city cars are a sham. Right? In 2006, this is an important example, some people say you can't do anything to fight the Accreditation Commission and you have to follow what they're saying. Right? But in 2006, Berkeley City College faced similar attacks and instead of just laying out and filing all of the tech cuts, what they stopped school did is they threatened the school the Accreditation Commission and they won! They fought back and won! What we need to do is fight back and win. Unfortunately, the politicians have remained silent up until this moment. Completely silent, right? When our school is under attack, the responsibility of the people who are elected from this city is to save our school, not dismantle it. We need to fight back. Everybody here, raise their hand if you're going to get involved to help save city cars. Right? Okay. We need to also think about what it's going to take to win, right? Because this is a great rally, this is a great action, but we know it's not going to be enough. We're going to need to ramp up our struggle. We are giving City Hall a one-month ultimatum. One month to meet our demands or we're going to ramp up our action. We need to learn, and we'd like you to have a speaker from Chicago. We need to learn from the uh, teachers who went on strike in Chicago. They show a way forward. We need to be prepared to take no uh, drastic action. It might be that's what's necessary to win this struggle. I want to encourage everybody here, if you haven't signed up yet for Safe UCF, sign up. Make sure you get onto the text alert system and come to our next meeting, which is next Wednesday, right, March 20th, at the Mission Campus of City College at 6 p.m. Every community should be there because what we want to do is organize a citywide campaign of the whole community to save this school. So next time we come back, we're going to be even bigger and even stronger. City College!
Yes. So everyone, you want to I am City College. We are City College. I was raised right here in San Francisco around drugs and violence, right in the Belmore District. I went through the juvenile justice system, the foster care system, and I persevered. And now, after working for years in the community on issues of gentrification, women's rights, against violence, all these issues in our community, I came back to this school to get my education. And this fall, this fall, I'm applying to transfer to UC Berkeley.